It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. Here we are, almost at the end of our season in our 35th year. These are the games that are going to determine who will be the last two contestants vying for the county championships. Welcome to the semifinal eliminations. Today we have two teams vying, Montpelier and Whitehall, one of whom will go on to play a winner in another game here today with a chance to become that first of the two finalists. Nice to have you all here today. And I hope you play along with us and see if you can match wits with these outstanding young people. Just fourth graders, all of them here from Montpelier. You may not be familiar with our show. Uh, typically, we come from the studio where I'm standing. All of our students are at home because of the pandemic. We hope to get them back in the studio soon. They don't have any buzzers, and we have 18 questions for both teams of comparable difficulty. They are different questions. They get 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do. No penalties for incorrect answers. We have kept all of the six traditional categories with us for this Zoom year. And if you're not familiar with them, here are our six categories. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. All right, it is now time to meet that team from Montpelier Elementary School. Would you please say hello to their captain, Assad? Assad, wave to everybody at home. Nice to have you here, Assad. And he is joined by Riley. Hey, Riley. Riley's out there too. He's a great kid. He's a great science player. And talking about great players, Amelia. Hey, Amelia. Good to have you on the show. All right, guys, if you're ready, I'm going to give you your first nine questions. We'll take a break. Come back and talk to you about yourselves and your schools and then your final nine questions. So we're going to start with green things for five points. Here we go. Teams, uh, maybe your mom has made you this lunch treat called ants on a log. It is raisins that represent the ants. And then there's peanut butter that's been spread onto a log. The log in this case is a stalk of what crunchy green vegetable. I think it's a celery. celery. It is celery, absolutely right. Ants on a log is peanut butter on celery with some raisins on it. Yeah, uh, celery by itself needs a little help. Good answer, five points. Here we go, for 15 points. Coffee trees, like many other plants, are prone to develop a brown spotted disease that is named for what same substance seen when iron oxidizes. Rust? Rust it is. That's our captain coming through Assad. Good answer. Rust on a coffee tree. Here's your 25 point question and it's a visual question, Montpelier. Have a look at this picture. If someone is allergic to lilies, a flower you often see around Easter time, you can still safely give them this familiar white flower, if you first remove what S-initialed floral parts that contain the pollen. You're looking at them right there. What do we call those S-initialed floral parts that contain the pollen? The stem. Three. Not the stem. It sounds like stem. It's called the stamens. Stamens, S-T-A-M-E-N-S, -E the stamens. Let's move on to the zoo. To confuse predators, animals like the hog-nosed snake, the Texas horned toad, and most famously, 
possums practice something called thanatosis. Literally, they play what? Dead. Dead is right. Possums play dead. That's what they call it, playing possum. And of course, the possum opens its eye after a while and sees it's all, everyone's gone and off he goes. And with the hog-nosed snake, if it flips over and pretends it's dead and sticks out its tongue, when it sees the coast is clear, it flips up and off it goes. It is a way to survive. Let's do zoo parade for 15. While crabs, lobsters, insects, and other arthropods have exoskeletons, their armored exteriors, vertebrates like ourselves, we don't have exoskeletons. Ours is called this kind of skeleton. Endo. Endo. You got that right. You got the right prefix there, Assad. Nice job. And for 25 points, when a female gives birth to a cloned offspring of a different species, say a weasel gives birth to a rare black-footed ferret, different species, the female that gives birth is known as this kind of S-initialed mother, not the real mother. She is the S-initialed mother. Do you know what we call that? Tough question for 25 points. It's called a surrogate. A surrogate mother. S-U-R-R-O-G-A-T-E. A surrogate is something uh, that takes the place of. Let's go to the body systems. Your last three questions before we take our first break. How many of you like horror movies? Do you like scary movies, anybody? I don't like them too much, but once in a while, you know, you sit there with your hands over your eyes. All right. In horror movies, to avoid being detected, people huddled together, hiding from the killer, sitting quietly, being careful not to move a what? Muscle. 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 They don't move a single muscle because they don't want to have their throat slit or whatever. <laughs> All right. Good answer. 15 points in body systems. Multiple choice. Would someone suffering from myopia, M-Y-O-P-I-A, someone suffering from myopia, would they have a hard time hearing, swallowing, or seeing? Seeing. Say it again, young man. Um, seeing. Seeing is right, yes, because opia refers to the eye. Myopia means nearsightedness. Here's the 25-point question. Let's get the 25-pointer. One of the teenage winners in this year's Regenera National Science Search Contest. Kids all over the country with their STEM fairs. The one teenager that won was trying to investigate the possible link between e-cigarette vaporization. E-cigarettes, you know, are, they don't, you don't light them. It's a device. E-cigarette vaporization and COPD. COPD stands for chronic obstructive this disease dealing with P, what P initialed body system. P initialed body system. The link between cigarette vaporization, e-cigarette vaporization, and this thing called COPD. What is the P initialed body system? When people smoke, what body system are they affecting most likely? Their lungs, the, the breathing system. And the P stands for pulmonary, pulmonary, like cardiopulmonary resuscitation, if you're trying to revive somebody who's had a heart attack. Okay, Montpelier, good start to your game. You're now at 110 points. That means you know you're in good shape. Good job so far. It is now time to meet the team, the wonderful team from Whitehall Elementary School. Let's say hello to their captain, Brad. Brad waved to everybody at home. Hey, Brad. And he is a fifth grader. And Jake is a fifth grader. Hey, Jake. And Layla's here. She's running out the fifth grade team. All right, guys. I know you're going to have a great game here today. And if you're ready, let's get started. We have three questions for you in the green things category. Again, a 5, a 15, and a 25, also in the zoo and the body before we take our first break. Here we go. All right, Montpelier, your green things for five points. Chicken Little famously thought the sky was falling when she was hit on the head with one of these oak tree seeds. 
Guys, guys I'm I, think I think it's an eight. Acorn. acorn. Yeah, she got bopped on the head with an acorn and she thought the, she thought the sky was falling. Yeah, Chicken Little was not, was not the brightest animal there. Let's go to 15 points. Good start. The children in the comic strip Family Circus, which is a family with three little kids, complain that in winter they can't see the skeleton of these trees that keep their leaves year round. Guys, what do we call the kinds of trees that keep their leaves year round, which, which would keep kids like you from seeing their skeleton, meaning their branches? I agree, I agree with that. Right? Say it again. Um, um, I said evergreen. Did you say evergreen? Yes. 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 Evergreen is fine or conifer. Good answer. For 25 points in green things. You know, you can buy meat in the store now that is not real meat. They call it motherless meat. To make motherless meat, scientists have started growing animal cells on scaffolds of spinach and celery cells that have been decellularized, meaning the only part of the plant cell that is left is this outer supporting structure. Do any of you have any ideas? It's the cell wall. You got it. It is the cell wall. Perfect. Nicely done, Jake. Let's go to the zoo. To sell a new kind of soy milk that's loaded with protein and is made entirely from plants, the company tells us the two of the world's largest animals, this greatest of the apes and this largest of the pachyderms, get all their protein from plants. Yeah, Name yeah, those I'm two animals. The, 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 I'm thinking of an elephant. You got it. Gorilla and the elephant. Think about it. They don't eat meat. They eat all plants. And you, ca you can see how big they are. They need a lot of protein. Good answer. For 15 points in the zoo. How many of you have a dog? Any of you have a dog at home? Any, any dog owners? Well, when a dog, good. When a dog licks your face, nice as that is, he or she is mimicking what wild canines do to their parents in hopes that mom or dad will do this. Do you, do you guys, guys have any? No. no. So, so, so the dog, dog um, um, in hopes of the parents will do what? Layla, do you have any? Um, Layla, do you have any? Um, Layla, do you have any? Say it again, Layla. Lick, lick them all? Not quite. You know, <laughs> when, when dogs, wild dogs, when they go hunting, or when wolves go hunting, they can't carry shopping bags back with them, so they swallow the food, and when they get home and their little babies start licking their face, they want mom to regurgitate dinner. That's what your, your, your pet is sort of trying to do. So regurgitate food, it was the answer there. No points. Try this last one for 25 points. When guppy fish and polar bears eat their own babies, and when the female praying mantis eats the male, these are examples of what C-initialed kind of behavior. I do think it's cannibal cannibal cannibalism. Cannibalism is right for 25 points. Excellent work. Excellent work, Whitehall. Let's go to the body system. You know some nursery rhymes. You know little Jack Horner? Little Jack Horner, who sat in a corner, famously stuck this digit into a pie. And he pulled out a plum, which rhymes with that same digit, and said, what a good boy am I. What did he jab into that pie? His thumb? his thumb? His thumb. He stuck in his thumb and he pulled out a plum and he said, oh, what a good boy am I. Thank you, Jake. Good answer. Let's have a picture for you for 15 points in body system. You know, long before today's antiseptics were invented, we humans instinctively licked our wounds, like you see this lioness doing here. Animals do it. Since saliva contains antibacterial properties and a factor that helps blood do this. 
I do think it's clot. It does. It help. It helps blood clot. It helps it coagulate. So, uh, it, without a band aid, you've got your saliva. Twenty five point question in body systems. Let's get this one. If you're having a T K R operation, T is in Tom, K is in kangaroo. R is in rhinoceros. If you're having a TKR operation, the doctor will be giving you a new one of these, otherwise known as the patella. Any of, Any of you guys have that? Jake, Jake and Layla? No. No. Can you repeat? Layla, what you say? Can you repeat? If you're having a TKR operation, the, op the doctor will be giving you a new one of these, otherwise known as a patella. I'm thinking, I'm thinking like I'm on the leg. You're in the right neighborhood, guys. Uh, another name for the patella is the knee. The knee. TKR stands for total knee replacement. That means Whitehall, you end the first round with 145 points. You're doing really well. Keep up the good work. All right, let's talk to this wonderful team from Montpelier. You find out a little bit about them. Let's start with their captain, Assad. Assad, how did you guys prepare for being on the Zoom version of the Science Bowl? Well, we did, we did and we watched old Science. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, if you watch old programs, you see, you learn the kinds of questions that we have here. I like your shirt, Montpelier Elementary Science Bowl team. Ah, wow, and you're wearing that with a lot of pride there. You know an awful lot about science. What do you want to do someday, young man? Have you thought yet about your future? Um, I want to do paleontology. Paleontology, wow, yeah, a dinosaur guy. There's something about that. You know, I, I don't know how many times you've seen Jurassic Park. I've lost count. It's just a great film. I just wish that were true, that we could find some DNA in a mosquito that bit a mosquito, had bitten a dinosaur. We could, we could bring them back. Nice to have you here. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to Riley. Hey, Riley. Riley, I like your spirit. You seem to really enjoy being with us here, and we really love having you. Tell us what you like about the Science Bowl. I just, I just like that you get to... This, this um, experience. Yeah, it's exciting. So it's, yeah, it's competitive. It it's so nice you that you play the game so well. Uh, now, your teammate wants to be a paleontologist. What, will you, what do you see yourself doing someday, or haven't you thought about it yet? Um, I see. Um, I'm trying to be a Wow, that's great. You know, you're going to have so many different experiences. You're so young, and that will, might change, but you know, sometimes the, your first instinct is right, and just uh, give it all your, your energy. And uh, I like your discipline, and uh, keep that up throughout your, uh, your school career here. And let's talk to Le uh, Amelia. Hey, Amelia. Hi. Hi, Amelia. You enjoying yourself today, I hope? Yes. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I wish we could see you just a bit better, but we can make you out. And tell us about your your dreams for your future. I want to be. Can you lean in just a little closer so we can pick you up on your microphone? Because I'm just getting like every other word from you. Try. Tell me again. I want to be a doctor. Doctor. Oh, that's great. That's great. And you know, you're going to be at school a long time yet but you've set a good pattern here, and I hope you look back someday when you get your MD, when we call you Dr. Amelia, you'll say, I remember when I was on Science Bowl, way back when, and it got me started on my career. You keep up your good work here in the second half. All right, Montpelier, time for your last nine questions. If you're all set, let's go to Let's Get Physical for five points. If you're causing sparks when you're walking around your house, happens in the winter, when the air is too dry, you can moisten the air and thus raise this by setting out a pan of water. As the water evaporates, it will raise what in your house? Any ideas there, guys? I don't hear any ferment out there. I know you've heard this term before, humidity. Humidity. 
you know, it gets real humid here in Washington in the summer and then in the winter it's real dry. So you need water vapor in your air in your house. 15 point question and let's get physical. Talking about colder weather. Whether road crews treating icy roads use magnesium chloride or potassium chloride or sodium chloride, all of those are this same kind of chemical that is harmful to the land and the waterways and that we use as a condiment on our food. Salt. 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 Yeah, they're all different kinds of salt. Sodium chloride is the most familiar one. All right, thank you, Saad. Here's the 25-point question, and it is a visual question. Look at the picture, please. Among the requirements for a celestial body to be called a planet, to be a planet, it has to be, it has to orbit a star, and it has to have enough gravity to give it this S-initialed round shape. What S-initialed word describes a round shape that can be applied to a planet? Size. Size. Not size, not size. A sphere. A sphere. Asad, you're trying to say something for me. Tell me again. Uh, Riley, what you think? A sphere. A sphere. That's what I want to hear. See, you were holding back on us. Thank you, Riley. A sphere is what it needs to be for 25 points. Good work there, young man. Let's go to potpourri. For about 100 million years after the Big Bang, the universe was dark. Then, and we don't know how, what sparkling objects appeared and illuminated the darkness? Stars. 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 Oh, right. That's right. Those were the stars. You guys are stars, too. The stars appeared. Got yourself five more points. For 15 points, NASA scientist Lonnie Johnson accidentally developed a hyped-up version of the squirt gun that is now in the National Toy Hall of Fame. It famously gets people very wet at backyard parties. What is it? Water, 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 water gun. It's a, a different name here. It's a kind of squirt gun, kind of a water gun. What do we call it? Have you ever heard of a super soaker? A, a, a super. super soaker. Get yourself one. It's a lot of fun. You know, you can get even with your brothers and your sisters. You can just get them soaked all the way through. All right, let's do the 25-point question in potpourri. Scientists have just successfully extracted the oldest DNA ever found from one of these M-initialed teeth found in the jaw of a woolly mammoth. Molar. Say it again, Asad. Molar. Molar is right. Good. You got yourself 25 points. That's the way to do it. Three more questions for you. Stay with me. Dateline for five points. If you've had two doses of a COVID vaccine, or if you're recovered from the disease and thus have natural immunity, the CDC says you no longer have to enter this Q initial separation if you've been around a COVID sufferer. What do we call this Q initial separation that a lot of people who get COVID have to stay in? Quarantine. Say it again. Quarantine. Quarantine is right. Yes, indeed. For five points. 15 points in Dateline. Besides inventing safety hoods for firefighters to keep them from inhaling dangerous fumes, African-American scientist Garrett Morgan also designed safer street crossings for pedestrians and cars by adding this color light to the common traffic regulator. Traffic. I need a color. What color Red. light did Garrett Morgan add to the common traffic regulator? Red. Nope, yellow. Yellow was the right answer there. He, he's the one who came up with the yellow light. That gave people time. Because imagine if it just went from red to green, boom, you'd get run over. 
so you have that yellow to buy a little time. It's a safety device. Last question of the game, 25 point multiple choice. When that brutal winter storm hit Texas in February, it killed off many of the African animals, African animals, like antelopes and lemurs and wildebeest that were living down there in zoos and on ranches. Since those African animals were not used to cold weather in Texas, those animals are known, since they don't belong here, are they known as exotics, endemics, or expatriates? They really stood no chance. Many of them died. Here are the choices again. Listen carefully. And when you answer, lean into your Chromebook so you're close to your microphone. Otherwise, I'm just hearing every other word. Here are, the, are these wildebeest, like in the Lion King, and antelopes and lemurs, like in Madagascar. Since they're not native to Texas, are they known as exotics, endemics, or expatriates? So I'm going to start with Assad. What do you think? Pick one. Riley, do you have an idea? Endemic. He says endemics. All right, Amelia, the choices again are exotics, endemics, or expatriates. Correct answer, there is exotics. Exotics was the first one. All right, exotic means from a foreign land. Okay, Montpelier, you have a great score. You're ending the game with 185. Will it be enough to bring you back to play for the championship round? We'll let you know in just a few moments. Nice work, guys. It's now time to talk to that team from Whitehall Elementary School, and let's talk, start with the captain, Brad. And Brad, nice to have you back. Let me ask you, how do you know so much science? Because you bring so much knowledge to our game. Um, it's because, it's because um, I studied by a lot of and I also watch a videos. Boy, you're doing all the right things. And I like your shirt, too. It says Science Bowl on there, 20, 20, 21. And you know, you, thank you. You're wearing it with pride, as you should, because you'll be able to tell your children someday, I was on the Science Bowl during the pandemic. And they'll say, what was that? And you can explain all about this craziness here and about Zoom. So you're making history. The first year that, you, that we've ever had this kind of version of Science Bowl. What do you want to do someday, Brad? Um, I want to be software engineer. Software engineer. Well, uh, something tells me you're going to be successful whatever you try. I like, uh, like how you play the game, and I like your, your scholarliness and how studious you are. Let's talk to your teammates here. Let's go over and talk to uh, Jake. Hey, Jake. Hi. Hi. Jake, you know an awful lot about science, too. You demonstrated that once before, and uh, thank you for wearing your headsets there because I know that helps you. Uh, hear exactly what's going on here. What do you want to do someday, Jake? I want to, I want to be an inventor. An inventor. Uh, not to give you any way trade secrets, but are you thinking about something in particular? What do we need that we don't have? Well, well I have a great idea, great idea. That, would help that would help the world. Wow, that's right. See, you're playing a KG as you should because you want to patent whatever your idea is. Keep up your good work. And let's talk to Layla. Hey, Layla, nice to have you back with us again. A fifth grader as well over there at Whitehall Elementary, and why'd you want to do this, Layla? Why'd you want to be on this show? Well, I want to be a scientist. Wonderful. Yeah, it's a great experience, and I like that you're challenging yourself. That's what life is about, you know. Always see if you're good enough for this level, and uh, it's like when you play tennis. Always play better, someone who's let, better than you, so it makes your game come up. What do you want to do someday, Layla? Um, I want to be a wild kid. Oh, that's going to be great. Uh, uh, again, I think you're going to be successful uh, because I like, I like uh, your intensity when you play this game. And you also have a nice sense of humor. And just lean in and talk directly to the, to the camera so we can hear, because I'm picking up just a couple of your words here, Layla. All right, Whitehall, now time for your second half, your second nine questions. All right, you're doing well so far. Let's keep it up. Here we go. Let's get physical for five points. Salt water sinks beneath fresh water because of this scientific measurement that you get by dividing its mass by its volume. Any of you guys have any ideas?
Salt water is denser than fresh water. If you divide mass by volume, you get the density. Let's try the 15-point question. If you're making yourself a hard-boiled egg and the water starts to boil and you forget it, bad move, don't want to burn the house down, you come back and all the water has boiled away. That will happen throughout that whole process when it's been boiling. The temperature, though, never goes above what reading on the Fahrenheit scale, meaning at what temperature does water boil? What temperature does boil? I think it's in the 100. Is it, do you think like 120, 101? Somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. It's 212. 212 degrees is the boiling point on the Fahrenheit square, square, uh, scale. Let's go to the 25-point question. Let's get this one. Since most of the rock layer found just beneath the surface dirt, in western Maryland is made of this L-initialed sedimentary rock. It's evidence that our state was once under ocean water filled with animals with calcium carbonate shells. Name that kind of L-initialed sedimentary rock. Um, I'm, I'm thinking like Say it again. Is it, is it limestone? It is limestone. Yes, it is indeed. 25 points. Excellent. Let's go to potpourri for five points. If you're not using a touch pad on your computer, you're most likely using one of these scurrying rodents. Guys, guys do you think it's mouse? Yeah, yeah. that's yes. right, yeah. You're using a mouse. For 15 points, listen to this little story. It's a simple answer. Early sailors to the New World often found themselves not moving in the oceans between 30 degrees north and south latitude, an area where the winds would often be calm for weeks. The sailors were stuck with their supplies of fresh water diminishing. The sailors would often reluctantly push these animals, these hungry and thirsty equines they had on board, into the sea. Therefore, these latitudes are named for what animals. Pigs? I hear pigs, I hear horses. That means, uh, Brad, I want you to make the choice. Remember, these are hungry and thirsty equines aboard the boat that have been pushed into the sea. Is it, is it Pig? Pig? No, an equine is a horse. They were bringing horses to the New World, so they pushed their horses overboard, which was, uh, I'm sure, tore them up because they would have needed those once they got to their destination. Let's try the 25-point question. The wildebeest that died recently in a recent Texas snowstorm, they were there on ranches and zoos, had never seen snow before. They died because their horns which are filled with these kinds of tiny blood vessels that normally release heat on the hot African plains, turned cold and took cold blood to their brains that led to seizures. So I'm looking for the tiny blood vessels that they had in their horns that would release heat into the atmosphere for 25 points. Tiny blood vessels. Capillaries? You got it. Capillaries is correct. Excellent. But they did not do the job when the temperature uh, turns cold because wildebeest did not evolve in that kind of climate. Nicely done. Let's go to the dateline for five points. Here's a picture for you for the first question. Perhaps the most trafficked mammal on earth, one that is now threatened with extinction. It is being killed for its food and its medicine. And the scales, which are used in medicine, are really nothing more than fingernails. This scaly anteater is known by what P, as in Paul, initialed name. Pangolin? It is a pangolin, absolutely right. 15 points for Dateline. After working just fine for 14 years, the Mars Opportunity rover stopped working in 2018 after a year-long dust storm 
made it impossible for what panels on the rover to keep powering it? Solar panels. Solar panels. Solar? Solar panels. That's right. They were all covered with dust, so the sun could not do what was intended to, what its intention was. Last question of the game. Twenty-five points. What astronaut, the first African-American woman to go into space, who served as a mission specialist aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor, is now a role model and mentor to a new generation of young astronauts? Who is that first African-American woman to go into space? What do you think? Um, I think it's Say it again, Layla. Dr. It is Dr. May Jemison. Absolutely right. You got yourself 25 points. Nice job. Nice job. All right. I have some great news for you. Whitehall, you scored 245 points. That is a tremendous effort here today. Nice work, guys. Boy, we hope you enjoyed this game at home because you saw the best of the best here. And I'm sure you were thinking, how did they know all that? That's because they are great students. We're proud of each and every one of them. Our final tally today is Montpelier 185. Whitehall 245. So Whitehall, congratulations to you. We're going to see you in the next round. And to Montpelier, what a game you gave us here today. You are champs as well. Let's have a nice round of applause for everybody. Everybody who is out there. Alternates, could you wave? Alternates, could you wave to everybody? People, youngsters who were on the team didn't actually play today, but boy, they're integral parts. We have our principals here, Miss Farmer from Whitehall and Miss Furlow from Montpelier. And we've got coaches out there too, Mr. Putiri from Montpelier, Miss Chilko and Mr. Booker from Whitehall. They all came together to make this happen and we couldn't be happier and we couldn't be more in, uh, in their debt for what they did. And thank you all for joining us. We hope to see you next time on another edition of this Science Bowl as we get closer and closer to the championship. Until then, I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye.